we want to talk about uh, magnetic flux. Turns out that the rate of change of the magnetic flux in a loop is equal to the EMF or voltage produced around the loop. We've seen this uh, with a magnet and a coil of wire. And we manipulate the magnet in front of the coil in such a way that the amount of magnetic field going through the coil varies. OK, we change the direction of the magnetic field so that it either goes right through the loop or goes parallel to the loop and doesn't really go through. Uh, and we put an ammeter, microammeter, down, and we played around with that. So it's something you should be familiar with. Now, now let's just say this circle here, assuming you can see it, uh, represents a loop. And we have a magnetic field in this direction. Then this circle is going to intercept the maximum amount of this magnetic field, provided the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, which would make it parallel to a unit normal vector perpendicular to the loop. So magnetic field here, unit normal vector in the same direction, maximum interception of magnetic field by the loop. If we change the loop so it's in this direction with the magnetic field still in this direction, then the loop intercepts or interrupts less of the magnetic field. And if the loop moves to the point where its plane is uh, parallel to the magnetic field, then it's going to intercept nothing. Okay, So there's no magnetic field passing through the loop. Now, of course, if we turn the thing around backwards, you can't see the loop anymore. Uh, uh, the normal vector to the loop could become anti-parallel to the magnetic field, which would result in a negative flux through the region. In any case, now, let's consider a magnetic field at point 0.005 Tesla perpendicular to the plane of a circle where the area of the circle is 4 square meters. Then the flux is going to be the entire magnetic field multiplied by the entire area <coughs> of the circle. So it's just going to be magnetic field times area. Now we use capital Phi uh, to represent flux. We say Phi sub B, flux of a magnetic field, that's to distinguish from the flux of an electric field, is equal to uh, the product of the magnetic field and the area. Again, in the case where the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the circle. And we multiply that out, and we get 0 0.02 tesla meters squared. Very straightforward calculation. Now, we could also do that in a more general vector context. Uh, we take B dot A, the vector field times the vector area. Uh, the vector area is just the area times a unit normal vector. So we do the dot product of V with the uh, area times the unit normal vector. Now, again, if the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the surface circle, then the uh, magnetic field dot of the normal vector, uh, being a, this being a unit normal vector, is just going to have a magnitude equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, depending on whether the magnetic field is in the same direction or opposite direction to the normal vector, uh, we're going to get a positive or negative result, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Okay, so let's say now we have magnetic field 0 0.005 Tesla times the I vector. And we have a circle in the XZ plane. Uh, same circle, area 4 square meters. So what's the vector area? Okay, well, the vector area is going to be the area times vector perpendicular normal to the circle. And if the circle's in the XZ plane, if this is X, Y, Z, if the circle is in the XZ plane, then the normal vector is either going to be J or negative J. So we're just going to use, I'll put a plus or minus here. It could be a plus or minus because J might be positive or negative um, according to this rough calculation. Okay, um, It's not a rough calculation. We're just being a little ambiguous about the positive and negative yet.
at this point. Okay, so the area then would be, the, the area vector would be the area times the unit normal. The unit normal would be, let's say, the J vector. So that B dot A is 0.005 Tesla times I times 4 square meters times J, but I dotted with J, it's not times 4 square meters, it's dotted with 4 meters squared times J. The dot product of I and J is zero. Uh, now that matches what I said uh, just a little while ago, that if the plane of the loop is parallel to the magnetic field, then there's no flux. So that the I dot vector, it uh, represents the magnetic field. Magnetic field's in the I direction. The normal vector is the J vector, and the two are perpendicular, so the dot product is zero, and that's going to give us exactly what we expect, the zero flux. Now, if the circle's in the YZ plane, according to our usual orientation, this is the YZ plane. Here's the circle. Here's the normal vector. So we should get, well, here's the circle and here's the magnetic field. The normal vector is in the direction uh, of the positive x-axis. So the normal vector is going to be the I vector. So when we do the uh, area vector, we're going to do the area of four square meters times the I vector. And we're going to dot that uh, with the magnetic field vector B. And in this case, we get this whole 0 0.02 Tesla meters squared that we got in this case where the magnetic field is per perpendicular to the plane of the circle. So everything works out as it should. Now, in the plane, uh, if the circle's in the plane, x equals y. Where is that? Well, here's the xz plane. Here's the yz plane. The plane x equals y is here at 45 degrees to the x-axis and the y-axis. So here's your 45-degree plane. Uh, to get the area vector, we have to find a vector normal to that plane. Now, I could use, uh, right now, I could use either uh, this vector or this vector. Now, I went ahead and used this one, although this one might have been more appropriate. But I, I went ahead and used this vector. Um, and that vector is just uh, j minus i. But of course, to do the area vector, we need a unit vector. So we're going to have to divide j minus i by the square root of 2. Again, at the 45 degree plane, we have equal components in the x and the negative j direction. So that the vector uh, j minus i, and I think I said that backwards, but the, the vector j minus i would be perpendicular to the plane. Divided by the square root of 2, we get a unit vector. And then we do the dot product. And the calculation is straightforward. The i dotted with the j gives us 0. Uh, we get the uh, i dotted with the i. And of course, it's a negative i, so I should have maybe made this negative. But the calculation, again, is straightforward. And we end up with the 0.02 Tesla meters squared, but multiplied by the square root of 2 over 2, which is the sine, or if you prefer the cosine, of the 45 degree angle. And uh, intuitively, we see that uh, here we intercept none of the circle. Here we intercept all of it. Here we intercept square root of 2 over 2 times the total area.